what's up guys I'm gonna show you guys how the ring app works with the ring alarm system we're gonna go over some of the features I'm gonna show you guys how to customize stuff like entry and exit delays how to set up a dress code how to set up different pins for different people how to check your emergency contacts how to arm and disarm the system and other things like it so let's get started but before we do don't forget to hit that subscribe button below so when you open up the ring app you get your three modes up on the top which is disarmed home and away so basically what it sounds like you can actually arm the system from your phone and no you don't need to be home to do it you can be in a different state as long as you have internet access you can actually control your system from your phone and you do also don't need to enter a pin when you do it from the app so I put it in away mode and in 60 seconds I'll go in away mode but I'm gonna disarm it for now but essentially you don't have to type in a pin because you're already logged in so no point in typing in a pin so you can actually customize these modes and change what they mean so if you click on the three lines up on the top left that pretty much the menu if you then click on settings and then if you click on modes you actually get to customize it here so this arm doesn't give you too many options but home and away do so in home mode you can actually check which centers are on so what does that mean so if you as an example like to sleep with the bedroom patio door open you can turn that off so it won't be monitored when the alarm system is in home mode so that means if you open up the door or close it it won't trip the alarm so you know if you like sleeping with the window open or something like that but you still want the alarm to be on you would essentially turn off the sensor here so you could freely open up that window but at the same time if someone were to break in from that window then obviously that also wouldn't trip the alarm so just something to keep in mind and I also turned off the motion detector because you know if I want to walk to the living room to get some water or something like that then I don't want it to trip the system as well so that's where you do that and then when you go back you could do you could change your entry delay and exit delay so that means entry delay is so if your system is armed and someone opens up the primary door they will they have a certain amount of time to disarm the system before it trips so this is where you change your times for that and this is the exit delay which means how much time you have until it gets armed right away so in home mode I have it at zero seconds so if I arm it it arms right away because obviously I'm not exiting if I'm in home mode but you can also change the time as well and same type of thing in away mode but in away mode I have all my sensors on because pretty much I'm away so if anything trips I want to be notified and I want the alarm to go off and same thing here entry and exit delay so you have a certain amount of time to leave your house when you basically set the alarm and the same thing oh that was entry and you know same thing when you exit so you could customize the times from here okay the next thing I want to show you is the users menu you have your owner and you have shared users and you have guest users so owner basically could do any they have all the power so you can reset your access code by clicking that and typing in a new code this is also where you set up your dress code so dress code basically calls the police for help while disarming your system so if you click create dress code you it can't be the same pin as any one of your existing pins and has to have at least two unique numbers so as an example if I set it to 9531 nine five three one and you feel free to click the I to see what type what pin you typed in and then when you click done you have to basically type in I agree here and then click I agree and that would set that up but essentially what it's saying is it'll call the police dispatch for help but you also can't cancel this mode so be careful when you type this in obviously you know you should use this in the emergency situation but if it's like a false alarm or something, I think the police can probably fine you for using this mode. But it's actually a really good mode to have because, you know, if you were forced to disarm your system, you can actually type in this pin and you will silently call for help, which is actually a really good feature. Really, really good feature. But I'm not going to set this right now. But just a heads up, be very careful with this feature because you don't want to do any false alarms. But also, it's very important to have. Now, if you go back, for guest users, I already have brother set, which I've been testing in the other videos. So if I click the plus on the bottom right, 
You can add a shared user, which means you would have to type in their email address, and then you can give them access to certain things like your alarm or your cameras or whatever. Or you can actually add a guest user. And as an example, let's say if, okay, let's say you're going to have a maid come and help you clean the house or whatever like that. So you have, you type in maid and then you click create an access code and you create an access code for them. So let's just say I'm going to do 4321, 4321. So when you click done and click save, you get two options. You could do create a schedule or you could do skip for now. So if you do skip for now, it's saved and the pin can be used whenever, 24 seven. If you click create schedule, you could say, okay, well the maid only comes on Mondays. So I'm going to tap Monday and they usually come from, you know, 12 to, I don't know, 4 PM. So the pins only going to be valid during those times, or you could say all day, you know, if they're late or whatever, what or early. Um, but essentially you could change this or you could just say, Oh, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to leave this. And it was the same thing as clicking skip for now. So now this pin will work 24 seven. So now you'll have brother and maid. And the cool thing is when the user types in their pin, if you go to your event history, it actually shows you who typed in the pin. And I'll show you guys an example of that. Okay, so the pins are important because they tell you who disarmed and armed your system. So earlier I said I have brother and maid. So brother is one, two, three, four, maid is four, three, two, one. So as an example, if I do one, two, three, four, so let's just say my brother armed it and he left and the maid came and disarmed it and did four, three, two, one, disarmed. It actually shows me on my phone who disarmed it. I can actually also go on event history and click on alarm and it'll actually show me who did that. When you go to monitoring, you can, this is where you type in your emergency contacts. So if the alarm trips, they'll call you and these are the contacts that you're going to set up. And you'll also have a verbal password. So if it's a false alarm, you can tell them the verbal password and then they won't send anyone. They won't send a police dispatcher or anything else for help essentially. Okay. So now we click on menu. We click on devices on the bottom. You're going to see alarm base station. So click on that and then click on base station. So this is where you see how much battery you have and your, so your base station has up to a 24 hour battery backup. So if power goes out, it can still work for up to 24 hours. And it has its own cellular connection, which has nothing to do with your cell phone. So if power went out, technically it could still call for help if it's within that 24 hours, or if your internet went down, it could still call for help because it has its own cellular signal. So as long as you have bars over here, over here, you can also check for updates and do a few other things like change your audio settings. But this is just for notifications when your, uh, alarm trips, it will, it will go on max volume. So that's not, this is not the volume for that. Um, led settings, link devices. So link devices, this is basically, if you have ring cameras, these ring cameras will automatically start recording when your alarm trips, whether or not they detect motion, they'll start turn on. So if I click on this, I could turn it off. If I click on it back, I could turn it back on. Um, so it's actually pretty cool that it could do that. Same type of deal for keypad. You could change the settings here. You know, you could do audio settings or led settings and stuff. So for the sensors part, I'm going to show you guys how fast this is. So I'm going to open up the patio door and you're going to see how fast it is. So it opened up within a second. It detected it within a second and I'm going to close it now and it closed it within a second. So it's very responsive. So you don't have to wait 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds or something. It's within a second. It notifies, it knows immediately that it's on and it can basically trip. But this one is actually designed not to trip during home mode. And you can also verify that with the sensor itself. So if I click on the sensor, if I click on mode settings, it actually tells me ignore when armed in home mode and in away mode, it says armed and monitored. So I can actually change it from here as well. One thing I did want to go over in this, when you click on the little cog on the top, right? 
This is where you could name your device and I recommend naming it something meaningful so you know which door or window it belongs to. But if you see placement, when you click on placement, this one is really important because this basically says if it's on a main door, if it's opened, your alarm won't go off right away. You have a certain amount of time to turn it off. That's the delay that we were talking about earlier with the modes. So as long as you turn off the alarm within a certain amount of time, the alarm won't go off. Now I set this as a secondary door because normally that doesn't get opened. So if someone does open it, I do want the alarm to go off right away. So you can do this for each individual sensor. You can obviously set it to window. So secondary door and window will trip the alarm right away. Main door will not. And you can obviously change the options later on in the future, which is also pretty cool. Another thing is if you have pets, there's a motion detector. Now, if you're wondering, okay, well, do I need to turn off the motion detector or do I need to leave my pets outside? Well, the motion detector has motion settings. So if you click on motion settings, you have low, medium, and high detection. So if you have large pets or numerous pets, put it on low detection. Otherwise, you put it on medium detection if you have small pets and put it on high detection if there's no movement. Now, I actually have a Roomba that vacuums every day, which is pretty awesome, by the way. But essentially, because of that, I set it on modem, uh, medium detection. And I can also test the motion. So what I do is I put the Roomba in the room where there's the motion detector. And then I turn it on. Uh, and I'm not in that room. So it, it'll actually tell me if it detected motion or not. If it did, then I would put it on low. But medium seemed fine. So as always, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all my current subscribers. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment sections below. And I'll try my best to answer them all.